Okay, so let's talk about parallel and perpendicular. Parallel lines means that they have the same slope. Perpendicular means that they have the opposite reciprocal slope. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, so we're going to write a line that is parallel to this one, but goes through these two points. This is the shorthand for parallel. So let's solve it. So right now they tell us it's parallel. That means I know that the slope is exactly the same. What I don't know is the y-intercept. So I wrote plus b here. It's always going to be plus b no matter what uh, is written up here. This is, uh, you're going to ignore this completely. Then we're going to plug these numbers in. This is x and this is y. We're going to plug these in to the equation. So y is 4, 2 over 3. x is now 3 plus b. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this turns into 2. And that's a 4 still, and that's a b. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm left with 2 equals b. So now that I know that 2 equals b, I know that the equation is y equals 2 over 3x plus 2, because it's a positive 2. And that's it. That's how you do parallel. Now we're going to do perpendicular. Now perpendicular, this is the shorthand for perpendicular, and it means that we're going to flip the fraction of the slope, and we're going to do the opposite sign. So this is positive, so I know that the slope is going to be negative. Now, Mr. Casters, what, what are you going to flip? Well, you put a 1 underneath it, and then you flip it, and it'll become 1 over 5. x plus b. See how I still wrote plus b, even though this is a minus? Now, we're going to plug in these numbers. So now it's going to be 5 equals negative 1 over 5, negative 5 plus b. So negative 1 times negative 5 is just 5. 5 divided by 5, 1. So this is going to be 5 equals 1 plus b. Then we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We're left with 4 equals b. Now that I know what b equals, y equals negative 1 over 5 x plus 4. And that's done. Okay, here we go. So domain and range. Domain and range. Domain is all possible x's. Range is all possible y's. So x's are... so. These are all the dots that are in this graph. All of them exist in here, so much so that they're, they're making a straight line here. All right, so domain is x. So this is the line x. So I have to know the range of it. So I have to know all possible x's. So what's the lowest x? So the lowest x is 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 3 is the lowest it'll go. It won't go past this. I don't have to write any x's past negative 3. So negative 3, and then to where? Now we got to figure out the maximum. So here's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So it doesn't go past 2. So 2 is the furthest to the right. So I'm going to write that furthest to the right. And that's the domain. All right, now we're going to do it for the range. The range is y. So what's the lowest y we have? The lowest, so here's 0, negative 1, negative 2. It doesn't go any lower than negative 2. So negative 2 is the lowest for the y. Then we check how high it can go. Let's see here. That's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. It doesn't go past 1. So 1's the highest. And you put that here. And that's the domain, and that's the range. Now sometimes they'll have you write something in set builder notation which means you're going to be adding this line here. You're going to be la adding the x and y over here, and then you'll be putting this fancy parentheses. All right? So that's domain and range when the line is continuous like this. 
if there was an arrow going down, then I would have changed some stuff into infinity. Or if it's going this way, negative infinity for the x. All right, so this one here. So this one is different. It's not continuous. I have to be specific about what, what I write before the domain and the range. So it's not every single number. So the x, there's one here on negative 4. There's one here on 2. There's one here on 0, then 2, then 4. So 4, 2, 0, 2, 4. So it's multiples of, multiples of 2. multiples of 2 and it starts at negative 4 and it goes all the way to 4 and that's it now this one is the other y is negative 4 negative 3 2 negative 2 negative one and zero. So it's going up by one, so it's every integer. So integers, and the lowest one is, lowest y is negative four. And the highest y, and go past this, so it's zero. All right, a couple more things to show you. Domain and range when they give you all the coordinates is literally all the all the x's. So I have a two, a four, I already have a two, a nine. So this would be two, four, nine, inside the weighted parentheses, and that is all possible x's. The y's are three, five, seven, eight. So I would write three, five, seven, eight. Okay, make sure you never write the repeated numbers. There was no repeated in the range, so I just wrote them all. All right. So functions. For every input, there's exactly one output. So this is this is not in function form. This is. See the difference? It has a y. This is f of x. So here, if I wanted you to replace uh, x, like put an input in. So if I wanted you to input x equals 3, and I wanted the output, I would have to write a whole sentence telling you, hey, x equals 3. Now tell me what it equals when x equals 3. So we will replace it. We write 2 times 3 plus 5, which is the same thing as 6 plus 5, which is the same thing as 11. Now we're going to do this one. If I wanted to tell you that x equals 3 and I want you to solve for it, all I have to do is write f of 3 equals. And that automatically tells you to replace the x with 3 in this function. Uh, so it would be 2 times 3 plus 5, which is the same thing as 6 plus 5, which is the same thing as 11. Now we're going to write a function, a linear function, given the graph, given the points on the graph. So we have to figure out the slope. The slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. So the change here is up one, up one, up one. So the change in y is positive one. If it was going down, I'd write a negative number. So the change in x, so that's going three, six, nine, 12. It's going up by three. So positive three is the change in x. So now I have the slope. Now I just need a point. I can pick any of these. I'll choose the three negative one, but you could choose any of them. Now we have now we know that y equals one third x plus b. Now we're going to plug this in. So it's going to be negative one equals one over three, three plus b. So it's going to be negative one equals one plus b. Then I'm going to subtract one, subtract one. I'm left with negative two equals b. And now that I know what b is, and I know what the slope is, I can write this. Remember, I'm writing it in function form. So we're going to write f of x equals 1 third x minus 2. And I'm done. 
Good luck.